Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, this is an incredible um, event, and a, it was a fantastic day. And I'm very moved and honored to actually won the competition among such a, uh, great competitors. So let me tell you a little bit about us. Sensely is uh, a digital uh, healthcare company based in San Francisco. And let me start with uh, one of the speakers today said what keeps her up at night, what makes her get up in the morning. So one of the things that get, makes us get up in the morning in Sensely is democratizing the access to care, making it possible for patients to actually access the care when they need it and how they want it. And not only that, making that little device that we spend so much time on the vehicle for that so they can do more and more wherever they are. And so we started, and my own field started in the field of virtual reality. And we have heard from some of the companies today uh, that virtual reality is being more and more used for many different treatment modalities. And one of the things that really attracted us in, in Sensely is the avatar, is the capacity to actually bring some of the old um, bedside manners into the technology uh, and not just have a cold app. So let me tell you how we actually tried to do that. So it starts with a dream, dream of smart uh, healthcare routing. Now imagine that you can get your patient where they need to be, when they need to be there, and you do that the first time. Um, what does that mean? Uh, that means that they might be able to, from the comfort of their smart device, schedule their appointment, uh, ask a question, um, and uh, meet potentially their GP or their therapist. Uh, and it is all done in a completely secure manner. Um, what would that truly look like as a single point access that has <coughs> here in England access to directory of services, clinical hub that can connect you and make an appointment with any therapist or GP that you need? And what happens after hours when there is no doctor? Could it really connect you to something like 111? Um, now, how would we design such a system was one of the first questions that we asked. The second question was, what are the features that it essentially need and the security and governances so it can actually go live? And what out of the plethora of incredible technologies can we use today? Uh, when I was doing this demo um, on the stage before, the demo didn't work. And so I'm hoping that if the technology is going to be kinder to me, uh, now and I will be able to show you what that interaction actually looks like right now with Olivia. Olivia. Any other symptoms? Oh, such as hold on. Rash. <laughs> so let's start over. It is not kind to me today, but. You, in a minute, hopefully, you will meet uh, a virtual avatar, Olivia. She is a virtual nurse, and Olivia is designed to speak to you in, an, in your language. She speaks many different languages. She's also designed to ask you questions and for you to answer in your normal voice. That means that she can collect many more symptoms and many more information from you uh, than you would if you were just putting, pushing buttons. In the US, um, Olivia, they're called Molly, is actually used for monitoring of chronic diseases like chronic heart failure, diabetes, or COPD. Why do we use Avatar? Why is it important that she speaks and that she has a face? I'll tell you why, because it is really difficult to, f uh, to form an emotional attachment to an app that you just push buttons on. But the moment we have an avatar that speaks, and if I can only make it work. Um, Hello, my name is Olivia, your virtual nurse. Well, here we go. Based on your symptoms, I can advise you as to whether you should see a doctor, call 111, or get self-care information. Let's start. First, what is your main symptom? I had a fever for a few days, I think. How long have you had a fever? It's been about two days. I see. How high has your fever been? About 39.2. Any other 
other symptoms, such as vomiting or a rash? No, no other symptoms, just the fever. How high is your fever now? About 37.2. In that case, I recommend you see your GP on Monday. I can help you schedule an appointment right now. Let me see what's available. I found six appointments. Please choose one that works best for you. How about Monday at 9? Monday at 9 o'clock. Confirmed. I'll send you a text reminder. In the meantime, if your fever gets worse, you can come back and talk to the 111 nurse, or I can locate your nearest urgent care. I can also provide you with self-care information. Remember that you can come back any time. Goodbye for now. And so you kind of get an idea of what Olivia can do for you. She can schedule your appointments. She can also access your minimal health care record where your allergies and, and some of the crucial medical informations are. She can locate a service for you if you're in an area where you don't know where the nearest uh, emergency is or a pharmacy, tell you their hours and their website if you need it. And also, just like you can, she asks you a question of what is the matter, uh, you can also tell her what the matter is and she will find you curated information. Now, it's not Dr. Google, it is actually uh, NHS Choices, so that is a really qualified source of medical information. But that is not what really makes Olivia unique. It is the uh, advanced artificial intelligence and um, um, smart machine learning, uh, the algorithms that are behind her that really make her clever. Uh, what it means is that Olivia can take input from the voice recognition that she gets from you, from the medical devices uh, like um, Bluetooth, blood pressure cuffs, um, glucometer or scales. Um, she can also take the quality of your voice, your facial expressions, and in the future analyze it all together and <coughs> put it all into your electronic medical health record for your GP or your specialist to actually look at. She also analyzes that information for risk because as a clinician there's nothing more frustrating than that whole pile of data. What I need to know as a doctor is, is there anything urgent, did anything change, and do I need to do anything about it? And if you want to make me really happy, then within the same system you give me a capacity to actually execute that action. And that's why we also have telemedicine and secure telemessaging uh, uh, within the platform, so you can actually speak to your doctor on the same device. We talked about 111, and when we looked at the UK system, we realized that this is one of the services that is probably the most ready for disruption. The reason is there is about 37,000 calls every day to 111. Each of those calls costs anywhere between 10 to 13 pounds. Now, what we found out is that 70% of those calls are now handled by health advisor. A uh, health advisor is a clinical professional that has about three weeks of training and is using the same type of algorithm or similar type of algorithm as Olivia to determine what the outcome of that interaction is going to be. Uh, Olivia gives you three outcomes of this interaction. One, if it is clinically determined by the algorithm, she will connect you and drop you in line for 111 nurse to talk to you and call you back. Two, she can schedule an appointment with your GP for the very next day. And three, she will get you information about the very issue that you actually came to 111 with. And you can locate the services you know, yourself through the app. Uh, that is a significant saving for the 111 system because she can do that for a fraction of the cost. The other percentage that really caught our eye was 15% of calls that are going into 111 are actually not calls for clinical triage. They're calls for information. And that is something that Olivia can do right from the start. So she can answer your question based on the uh, body of uh, information within NHS that she can search and provide you with a specialized report on fever, measles, rash, 
whatever it is that you are really struggling for. She can also tell you where to go and buy that uh, anti-itch cream or the Tylenol if you're in an area where you don't know where to go. And so just those two uh, changes, disruptions alone, would potentially save an HS111 100,000 pounds a day. Uh, and that is if the app has about 10% download. And that is a significant change. And that is the money that can be distributed for other services that need it more. Is it the same as talking to a live nurse? No, we all would really like that attention. But the sad truth is that our systems here or in the United States can really afford that. And so wouldn't it be smarter to use the technology where we can and save the money for where we really need it? Thank you.